How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with moi. I'm here. Happy Sunday, everybody. A lot to break down today on the show. I'm excited to talk about this today because this week was chaotic. On Tuesday, our very own Dave Meltzer put out a tweet that sent the wrestling world uh, in, into a vortex of insanity. Uh, raw media rights deal, obviously, is coming up. And the big story here is there was a meeting with WBD. I'm going to go into everything I know. I'm going to go into what I have heard from people within WBD. I'm going to go talk about uh, other journalists that I've spoken to. Uh, this is a fascinating, fascinating change of events, or maybe nothing. We're going to talk about it. Also, ROH final battle was Saturday night. Friday night. What day is it? I don't know. Friday night. You know what's happening. My notes are being updated as we're talking. And I, I'm seeing the wrong things at the wrong time. ROH final battle. We're going to break that down. I, I thought it was a really fun show. I thought that main was good. I thought Danielson was a lunatic once again. Continental Classic update. Also injuries and a Liv Morgan arrest. We're going to talk about this. But the big story here is the raw media rights deal. And what does this mean for AEW? I spoke to someone at AEW on Tuesday night. You know, whatever happened, happened very fast and very, very uh, secretively. So we're going to talk about this and a whole lot more Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline, Sunday edition of the show. We're going to rewind. We're going to go all the way to Tuesday. Where my entire afternoon got derailed <laughs> by one tweet by Dave Meltzer. On Tuesday, Dave tweeted that WWE has uh, more offers for Raw now that CM Punk is on the show and it's changed the course of this rights negotiation for Raw. Speculation is that Nick and Trip Nick, Nick, we're on first name basis, guys. Nick Khan and Triple H met with WBD recently as early as this week. The, the report is that it was on Monday, according to PW Insider, and Dave, uh, I believe, has heard the same. Per Dave Meltzer, WWE back is back talking with WBD. CM Punk may have opened the door that was shut on them. Now, the big question is, how does this affect AEW? Now, I'm going to go into what I know, okay? And what I know is nobody that I speak to at WBD uh, as of, I would say, Thursday night was aware of this meeting. They had heard the same stuff, but nobody had any insight. I made the joke on Matt Men. I pretended I was a journalist this week. I reached out to numerous, numerous people asking the questions that you guys want to know. What is this meeting about? What was discussed? What does this mean for AEW? And as far as I know, and the people that I know, nothing has changed and they're continuing on course. And the expectation is that AEW is staying. Well, I don't know what the negotiations are for TV. I know that the max offer... Uh, that was done. That was completed. It's just a matter of, I, I guess, waiting. To, I don't know if it's signed or they're waiting to sign or what, but I know on the WBD side, things are done on that. But I've never really heard much about a number for TV. But this is very interesting. Um, my person, this is, again, my personal opinion, right? This is what I, I'm going to take a guess, right? A lot of people did this with the WWE sale on who would buy it. And a lot of people assumed it was the Saudis. I'm not saying report this. This is just my guess. I think there were conversations based on certain people that I've spoken to that are in the world of professional wrestling media and journalism. Uh, some of them are not the typical names. Some of them are, are you know, kind of behind the scenes guys. And it, this is a fascinating, fascinating story. I, I mean... People are saying that the meeting happened and nobody knows what was discussed. It was a multi-hour meeting. Now, according to Dave, 
WWE's looking for close to $400 million for rights for Raw. I don't think that is a number WBD is willing to pay. Will they get $400 million? I don't know. I don't think so. But, I mean, WBD is not in a financial situation to pay them, you know, $400 million per year. MG, that's an, that's an astounding rights deal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoever gets this property is going to pay for it for sure. Well, you're gonna, you, you better have a great ad sales team. I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. Holy moly, those guys have to work in overdrive. And I know some of these things are loss leaders, right? And that's how you, know, you justify the NFL. It's a loss leader to bring you to whatever you're putting on. I can't see WBD putting on anything at 10, you know, 11 o'clock at night. That's going to be a good loss leader for them with a $400 million a, a year raw deal. Now, I don't, again, I'm not, I'm not leaning towards this is happening. I'm not one of these doom and gloom people for AEW. I'm just saying we, it's too early. Nobody knows a thing. You know, Dave's report was accurate also. It, it, and the, forget about WBD because he never mentioned them in that tweet that he put out, but CM Punk, is, he definitely has changed the conversation around Raw because Raw was not the flagship property everybody wanted. SmackDown is the one. So Also something to consider yeah. here. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. No, you, go ahead. But also something to consider. He made that um, tweet after they did the announcement on Raw that he was going to be exclusive to it. Now, yeah. you know, I, that's, the, that's the TV, the kayfabe side, the TV yeah. side, but... When he did that, you know, suddenly, oh, yeah, uh, Raw's a bigger property now. Everybody knows that now. Uh, I mean, um, is, I it, think- is it not? We don't know. See, here's the thing. Punk has been on two episodes. Three three mm-hmm. episodes, uh, including SmackDown. Well, four if you put NXT. I, it's so early to say that this guy has shifted the trajectory of the deal, but it, he has to an extent because now, you know, if you're, if you're FX – and you were kind of getting a little cold on this. I'm not saying that this is what happened. Now you you might be a little bit more intrigued. I know that NBCU, there were people within the company that are more intrigued than they were prior. And they they would, to me, it seems like NBCU is, you know, there's a little bit more fire behind them when it comes to this about maybe maybe keeping Raw. Is this the time you want to let them go? I don't know. I, I find this story very interesting. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a sexy report by me. It's not something fun that people are going to click on and, and, you know, these, these clickbaity headlines, just, we don't know. And by we, I mean, everybody, Dave knows what he, you know, what he was told, but again, he it's, it's still an uncertain. He doesn't know what the answer is. Sean did the, Sean did his due diligence with this report and said, listen, everybody that I spoke to, nobody's heard a thing about it. Could there have been a meeting? Yeah. Was there? I don't know. So either this is a nothing story or it is it was so high up and so fresh it hasn't trickled down. Maybe it's somewhere in the middle. But $400 million, I mean, that's a lot of money for that property. For 1.5 million viewers a week on average? That's tremendous. And there are a couple things I have to go into, you know, deciding that number. I don't think they're going to get $400 million for that show. I mean, I'd be shocked if they did. But crazy things have happened in TV rights. You know, a lot of these people are just throwing money for sports, DVR-proof first-run content. And that's the key here. DVR-proof first-run content weekly, 52 weeks out of a year. The NFL is only 18 weeks plus, you know, playoffs. MLB is a couple of months. NBA is a couple of months. Actually, baseball is the longest, right? I would say. NBA too. NBA yes. is a really long. But but either way, you, you still have off. You know, you're not running full year schedules here. It's a, wrestling baseball is a very unique games. program. Yeah. What is that? I said baseball plays the most games. Yeah. But they play every day. You know, 
Yeah. Almost. A couple days to break here. So, the, you know, WBD side of things, you know, I'm just saying we got to wait and see what happens here. Because there's a lot of questions. Tony, and we'll talk about a little bit of this when we come back from break, because I'm going to go into it here. But uh, Tony did a press conference on Tuesday also. While the, right before Dave's tweet happened, this, is, this was uh, the scenario. Khan did a, uh, he did a, he did a scrum for Ring of Honor. And a couple interesting things here in this. Also, the post-Ring of Honor show was fascinating too, how he was responding to things. I don't know if you have that in the notes. We're going to talk about that when we talk about Ring of Honor next. But I want to go into this a little bit, and then we'll pick it up after the break. But Tony said that all in 2024 is approaching about four, 5 million in ticket sales. They, they're moving this thing nicely right now. I think that they could finish with up to upwards of 60,000 in that building. Revolution approaching 1 million in ticket sales. This is going to be a huge show, by the way. Have you seen the ticket sales for this? Already 12,000 tickets in that building. 12,000 tickets have been distributed. And that's a big building. I think they could fit a... You want to see Sting's last match? Yeah, people want to see Sting's match. How many people fit in that in the Greensboro Coliseum? Upwards of 30, I, I think. Yeah, look it up. We'll, we'll, yeah, during a break, we can look it up. Uh, the safe bet is that the Continental Classic again will happen next year. He also called Final Battle on Ring of Honor, uh, on uh, Honor Club a huge success. He didn't mention subscriber numbers. There's a lot of question as to what the subscriber numbers are. I think it was around 10,000 before uh, Tony took it. So I don't know where we're at. When we come back, we're going to continue this conversation and a whole lot more here. I want to touch on this and uh, in collision as well. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. That was a crazy break I was just on. You have no idea what's happening in my, uh, in my house right now. My studio. My house studio. Contractors banging around. Let's go back right into this. I want to talk about this. Ring of Honor Conference. Brandon Thurston. Great questions by Brandon. Always. Really one of the best of what he does. He put out a fantastic... Uh, go to Russellnomics. Uh, if you... I don't work with them, but their Patreon is fantastic. If you're into numbers, the, you know, the business of wrestling, nobody does it better than them. Uh, they did a great job at breaking down AEW's financials. Very detailed. Uh, I would recommend uh, going and checking it out if you're into that. But uh, as we said... He called Final Battle on Honor Club a huge success. Didn't mention subscriber numbers. On AEW's TV deal with WBD, Tony Khan said that both sides are doing their due diligence. People in re wrestling spend a lot of time on Twitter, and even when things are great for AEW, there are people saying there's a problem. You know, Tony laid into this a little bit, and he said how unfair it is. I, I mean, listen, it it's the problem is anybody could say anything. And in the world that we're in, everything gets aggregated and everything gets amplified. Is it fair assessment of AEW in their business? No, absolutely not. not. Most of this, the criticism about AEW is very unfair and unjust. However, that's the internet and that's everything. Same goes for AEW, WWE, same goes for Impact or TNA now, right? They, they're TNA as of the new year. So interesting stuff here. Uh, Final Battle was an interesting show. I enjoyed this. Did you did you catch all of it, MJ? I did. I okay. ca I caught uh pretty much long most show. of it. Um yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It was it started at 7 for the pre-show and went till midnight. So yeah. yeah. What what was your favorite match on the card? Uh the uh the six man the the Brian Dane the the Jay Black Briscoe Bull tribute Combat match? Well, yeah, Jay Briscoe. Yep, yeah, that was yeah. definitely mine. Mark Briscoe and FTR mm -hmm. defeated Blackpool Combat Club. Danielson was bloody. Briscoe got the pin. Uh, I, I very much like this match. You know, it, it's fascinating. The, the question of what do you do with Ring of Honor? Every, you know, when, when Tony picked it up, I, I don't think the intention of what he's doing today was what he had thought he would do. There's a lot of suggestions as to what should have happened. In my opinion, I think Ring of Honor would have been a great studio show 
when they were filming in Florida and you would have kept it that way and it would have been a developmental for your for your talent to start working in front of a crowd and then you use it like like a developmental like like NXT but that's not the direction they've gone this is a this is a very different show this i mean it's really become like the um just a mix match of of talent known unknown triple a mega like if title you don't have match. a program on yeah yeah if yeah. you don't have a program on uh, AEW main hey uh, we'll fit you in here which I'm, you know they're trying to keep it like the legacy it's more of a legacy program right they want to keep the same feel and aesthetics of the old ROH i get it um but yeah i don't know mm. i get it too listen i get it too i i think it's cool that we get to see you know vikingo and, and black taurus you know I think that's cool to see it. Uh, I'm not the biggest Lucha fan. I, I appreciate it, but it, it's it was a it was a really good. You know what's interesting about Lucha though that is there's a lot of hand holding that happens, and we saw yes. that in this match. And Ian Riccoboni did a great job at telling a story of a mess up and making it into something. Did you see that spot? I might have missed that spot you're so, talking about. This is the match Black Taurus is on the really outside. I, I know, dude. You you were you were saturated with wrestling this week and MMA. <laughs> you're you're. It was so much content and to consume. Football. <laughs> and football. Uh, Vikingo went up to do a spot off the top rope, right? Like he does that running spot. He jumps on the rope and then he flips, and he lost his footing and he went back down and he went to go do it again and he lost his footing again oh, and then I the third time that. he just jumped I on did him. See that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Ian Riccoboni, you know. Good wrestling IQ, commentary IQ. He goes, oh, yeah, he, he's doing that to fake him out. Because, look, he's been standing there. He expected him to do this, and he faked him out. You know what? Great job at telling the story to an American fan. Because in, in Lucha, there's a lot of that. You know, they, they go and they redo the spot. It's more gent. It's fluid. I thought that was, uh, that was a really good match outside of that uh, little mess up there. Kyle Fletcher. He's getting some time here in Ring of Honor. Kyle Fletcher, new Ring of Honor World Television Champion. Very fun match. Good for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's something to look at, you know? Yeah, he's going to be one of those players in the next five years. Mm -hmm. five, yeah, for, years sure. for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. ROH Pure title match. Wheeler Yuta defeated Filthy Tom Lawler, our very own Filthy Tom. I want more Filthy. I want more I Filthy Tom. I think slowly getting it. He's I, popping I, up everywhere. Listen, he got <laughs> robbed out of that out of that match with Adam Cole. Okay, <laughs> I I don't know what that match would have looked like, but I I know it would have been great. I just I love the gimmick. I love him. You know, I I, I would like to see more of Tom, and not because he's he's part of the uh, family here at F4W. Keith Lee defeated Shane Taylor. They told the story here that they were tagged, and now now they're feuding, and they had that match. Uh, we spoke about the Jay Briscoe tribute match and Ring of Honor World title, women's title. Uh, this was interesting. Athena defeated Billy Starks. Athena, Athena has really catapulted over, since you know leaving WWE, and you're seeing how good she is. I'd like to see her on AEW TV and be in the mix for the AEW Women's Championship. That is a big contention online. A lot of people want that. And she's she's really she's really good and she's doing great work with Billy. They're they're elevating Billy Stark and they're making kind of a you know, a star out of her too. And this is going a long way. They're telling that story. Yeah, this, Billy's great this, too. I like Billy. Yeah. She she's fantastic. This is one of the biggest this 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 was the big storyline that's been happening in the past like three months on this ROH show. Yeah. From what I've caught of it, you know. Yeah. Also, uh, Eddie Kingston defeated Anthony Henry in a uh, ROH world title proving ground match. All right, cool. It was a fun show. I, I very much like this. I like a nice pay-per-view on a Friday night. But the, again, same time that this is happening, guess what else is happening? SmackDown is happening. Then Rampage is happening. It's a lot. It's too much overlap. But what are you going to do? Since we were talking about SmackDown, oh my God, we're going to talk about this. AJ Styles, <laughs> he is so jacked, 
I've never seen him this big, beyond jacked. Uh, we're going to talk about this on, on, you know, when we break this down, but he showed up ridiculously big. So is the wellness policy no longer on the corporate site? That's correct. I added that in. I don't know what that means. It's been that way for a minute. And I, I noticed it right after the, the UFC, um, the announcement that UFC was leaving USADA. Yeah. So I wonder if they're redoing something. I don't because know. I know that there's still a wellness policy for sure. Okay. Th that does be, exist. But, but yeah, the, th the there's... fact that it's been taken down, I don't know. If Listen, if you're 45 years old, I'm not, I'm not saying that this is the case for AJ or Randy or anybody, right? You're in your mid forties. There is, and you are athletic and you're not like a Brian Danielson where you just eat, you know, happy things that come from the earth. That came out really wrong. That sounds like I was I was saying that he's eating mushrooms or something like that. I'm just saying, you know, he's very healthy. He's a vegan. He grows his own stuff. Most people, most men, I would say, that are in sports in their mid-40s and they want to continue having a physique, they're taking TRT. More people than you think. Listen, I'm one of those people. I go to the doctor. I tell them, you know, my issues, and then they, they prescribe it. That's how it is. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying accusing anybody of being on it, but the shock in people. They're like, oh, my God, the wellness policy has gone. I'm like, I don't think you guys understand how this works. It's a very normal thing. I don't know. I, I actually, to be honest, in my like personal life, anyone that is in fitness to some extent that I'm close with, uh. Their majority of them, I would say about 80% of them are, are getting TRT or peptides or something. Again, I'm not saying that that's AJ's situation here or Randy's situation. It's just everybody's beefed up again on that TV show. Austin Theory looks great. He's beefed up. Cody looks good. Punk is looking good. You know, I think people are putting in more attention to detail here with how they look. It's one of those things that separated WWE from everybody else. You'd watch WWE and then you'd watch Crockett. And there's a guy that resembles my father's best friend with no shirt, fighting, and he looks like a drunken brawl that's happening at a barbecue of mine. And then you put on WWE, WWF at the time and everybody looks like a superhero. That gravitates to kids. That, that connects to them. No one wants to watch their uncles brawling. I want to watch Superman. I want to watch Batman, big jacked up dudes. But I found, I, I, I think it is interesting how uh, a little bit more attention to detail with the looks here. AJ looked fantastic. I hope he has a great, uh, great program. It looks like it's going to be LA Knight, another big dude. He attacked LA Knight when the show went off the air here. AJ LA Knight, I could get behind. What I want to see is AJ Styles and CM Punk. I don't know if we'll see that match, but man, I want to see that match. Well, AJ's on SmackDown and Punk's I know. on Raw. So. I know. I, uh, that's why Not I said I know we least. won't see it for now. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot of options here. I thought that was the big part here. Randy Orton defeated J uh, Jimmy Uso. So they're, they're creating this little, uh, little program here. I'm curious what's going to happen with AJ. When we come back, we're going to break down more of the world of professional wrestling. We're going to talk about Collision. We're going to talk about Dynamite. And a whole lot more, including Kenny Omega being out of action for a while. Just terrible news. So, also Charlotte, another terrible news here. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. I mentioned this before the break. AW Kenny Omega out of action indefinitely after being diagnosed with diventiculitis. Diventiculitis. I always have trouble with that. Diverticulitis. This was after a very strange promo on Dynamite. You know, you know, and this poor man got so much crap for that. Him and Jericho had a really bad talking segment against Big Bill and Ricky Starks. And it just like there was no chemistry. Uh, Kenny just, he seemed off. He, he just came, he just... 
I don't know, something was going on, and I think everybody noticed it, and they said, oh, it was just a bad segment, but it turned out he had to go to the hospital, and he, they, I don't know if he got a surgery now or, or he's about to, but he, he said that he was in tremendous pain. It's a very painful uh, thing to get. I think uh, Harry Smith just had it. He just recovered from it. Obviously, we know Brock Lesnar and how much it almost ended his career. It was very, very dangerous for him. Kenny was scheduled to challenge for the tag titles along Chris Jericho at World's End. It might have been... I don't know. Do you think they would have won? Or I don't know the program here, what they were going to do with this. I could find out, though. I think they were going to win. I really do. So I don't, who knows what they're going to do? Yeah. Um, so uh, terrible. Uh, I feel bad for Kenny. I think he's a major, major asset to that company. I don't know how long he'll be out. But he, he's a guy that, you know, this is years of just taking a beating on the body. But, you know, this is not necessarily an injury. This is this happens for, again, once again, we're talking about athletes, right? This happens to a lot of athletes, high protein. You know, I, I read this math uh, a friend of mine sent to me. And the amount of protein per body weight that you need to consume if you're, you know, into fitness is something disgusting. Like, I don't even know how you're going to consume that much protein. And these guys are, you know, 200 and something pounds and they work out religiously. And, you know, sometimes the body can't break it down and this is what happens. Very uh, terrible. I feel bad for Kenny, for sure. I feel bad for AW and Kenny here. Also, Charlotte Flair out for nine months. Due to a knee injury. She was injured last week in her match with Asuka. They announced this on SmackDown this week. Um, did they say what the exact injury was? They didn't, um, but it, it looked like it that she blew that knee completely out. She blew Just that knee by out. By her yeah. reaction. Do you yeah. know what spot it was? Was it the was it the the mess up on the top? On the on the ropes? Yeah, it was yeah, she fell off the ropes and that's where they said uh they they actually showed it on SmackDown this week. They they had a little clip of it. But she wrestled it. throughout. The, I mean, she wrestled more after that. Yeah, she she. But she was clearly limping on. Oh it. yeah, it, it looked bad. Um, yeah. She also did that flip very off the similar. top in that match. You know, to the outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. I will say this: I I for SmackDown's women's division, they're they're very deep. So it's unfortunate because she's such a star, but and she won't be around for Mania. But they got a lot of programs they can work with that with yeah. that roster. So yeah, terrible. So that's and then good for them. and Liv Morgan was arrested <laughs> in Florida on pot possession. This, this you know this became really big, and then all of a sudden everybody is a is an expert, is a legal uh, expert <laughs> on on cannabis and drugs. So the charges were possession of synthetic cannabinoid, possession of marijuana, possession of drug equipment. So it seems like it was a vape. The synthetic cannabinoid is a vape. The possession that of pot is obviously correct. pot. Uh, she was in Florida. Now, she wasn't booked, as far as I know, for a, you know driving under the influence. She was booked in Summer, Sumter, 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 Sumter County. Posted bail, $3,000. You know, my producer's whispering in my ear. Did I get that wrong, John? Now, he, now he's laughing at me. PW Insider reported that Morgan will be arraigned of, uh, for the charges on February 12th. Uh, there's no issue. There's no internal uh, heat on her for this. Listen, Florida has weird laws. It's a pot possession charge. Uh, the reason for the pull over, for getting pulled over is that she, I guess she went over the, the line and that, that kind of was what the internet was kind of spread. Listen, uh, you got to You got to have a reason to pull someone over. And they wrote that down as the reason. And you know, the car probably smelled like pot, which they said it did. And she got arrested. I feel like this is going to get uh, either reduced or even no, dropped. This gonna get, no, this is going to get dropped. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. gonna get dropped it, it's mm -hmm. it's 2023 yeah you know listen if she was under the influence that's a very different story to have you know to discuss mm -hmm. it's a yeah. very totally when different I looked story at the, to uh, talk about the the original uh post uh the comments on it 
everybody was like, it's 2023. Why is this even a thing? But again, it's Florida. So I think the most people Listen, understand. But also, it. but also, you know, I don't, I don't do anything like that in my car. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty careful when I drive. <laughs> so I have a lot to lose if I get pulled over and I got busted for something like that. So I, I, I get it. I, you know, it is what it is. What are you going to do? I'm not going to, I'm not going to sensationalize the story for her. And I feel bad for her. I think her punishment is bad now. Her mugshot is all over. You know what? And a great mugshot too. That's probably the best mugshot ever. Taken. One of the best mugshots you could ever imagine. So good for her. <laughs> Continental Classic Blue League matches. Let's talk about Collision a little bit. Claudio Castagnoli defeated Andrade. I did not think that that was going to be it. I think Andrade. I thought Andrade would have the 12 points. So now, Claudio, 6. Andrade, 9. Or, yeah, 6 and 9. Yeah, 6 and 9. Abaddon. More Abaddon this, every week now, huh? Yeah, she's a feature on Collision all of a sudden. Yeah, defeated Allure. Jasmine Allure. After this match, Julia Hart confronted Abaddon. So you got a spooky story here. Sky Blue apparently has no, has no, has, has not aligned herself has aligned with the House herself. Black. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Has no yeah, aligned sorry. herself. <laughs> yeah, I just read what's on the paper big here. big typo. Yeah. And helped attack Abaddon. Uh, interesting. Thunder Rosa ended up coming out. Uh, from the Spanish, uh, from the Spanish announce table to to even the odds. Okay, so Thunder Rose is back. We knew that she was gonna come back eventually. Okay, cool. I want to see what she's she got could a big do now. pop too. Yeah, she's been gone for a while, and they were in Texas, yeah. of course, mm. home state. Yeah. AW International Title Match: Orange Cassidy defeated Brian Keith to retain. Texas Street Fight: Chris Statlander and Willow defeated Mercedes Martinez and Diamante. Brian Cage defeated Kerry Wright. He also got a Continental Classic Blue match. Eddie Kingston, six points now, defeating Daniel Garcia with nothing. No points. And you had Brian Danielson defeat Brody King. So right now, here are the standings. That match was great, by the great. way. Oh, dude, so good. I'm going to tell you, these, these Continental Classic matches have been really good. Really, mm -hmm. really good. I, I, I've liked all the Danielson ones. The Andrade ones are fantastic also. I think Andrade has stood out the most here. And I, and I, and I unfortunately feel like something's going to happen and he's, he's going to get screwed out of this and Miro's going to become the problem. Which I'm fine with yeah. for the next show. If that's the match the way, at World's um, End. Just to add to the injuries, CJ yeah. Perry apparently got, uh, got an infection in her finger. And had to Ooh. miss this week. She was supposed to be, yeah, it went up her arm, I guess. Oh my god! She was supposed to be in um, uh, CMLL. Uh, Andrade was supposed to be at CMLL, and I think he was. And she had to miss that, and she had to miss last night. So, so hopefully, she's oh, better too. Terrible. Mm -hmm. Here are the points. Blue League, Andrade with nine, Danielson with nine, King, uh, Brody King with six, Claudio with six, Eddie Kingston with six, and Garcia with nothing. So Garcia is eliminated, obviously, and so is Jay White, and so is Mark Briscoe. But man, what a nice top group here, huh? Andrade, Danielson, Brody Roosh. King, Claudio. Oh, Roosh, Roosh. No, Roosh is not eliminated. Is he? He has six points. Oh, he's got... Yeah, Jay White has nine. Jay White has nine. Okay, so here's the gold league. Moxley with 12. He's 4-0. and oh. Swerve with nine. Jay White with nine. Roosh with six, Jay Lethal with nothing, and Mark Briscoe, zilch. Who do you think takes this? I, you know what I think we're going to end up with? Mm -hmm. A Black Bull Combat Club uh, final. So you're going to have Moxley Danielson and Danielson? Moxley. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't believe mm -hmm. it's Swerve. I don't believe Swerve is winning. And I don't think he should. No. I think well, he's already bigger, behind, so. Yeah, I think there's yeah. bigger plans for Swerve. He's not really behind. He's behind by, it's only nine points. Nine, Jay White and his swerve have, are tied right now. There's only one more match, though, so. There's Is only it, one more, okay, so uh, what are the, match, what are the matches yeah. for next week? Do you have that? Uh, I did. Mm. You can find it. I don't know. I, I very much like this. I think it's a good showing of, of good talent. And that's the wrestling I like. We talk about it all the time, right? What is the wrestling that you enjoy? 
That's the wrestling I enjoy. I like, I mean, all these guys, such amazing talent. And you know what's unbelievable? Mark Briscoe, Jay Lethal, Roosh, Jay White, Swerve, Garcia, Kingston, Claudio, uh, Brody King. Every one of these guys I have watched in the indies. Like my, my era of independent wrestling, this is it. From like 2004 to pre-pandemic, these were the guys. Swerve Strickland, I saw him at Laboom on, on, on Northern Boulevard here in Queens. The guy was a star then, before going to NXT. Danielson, I saw him, I mean, 2004, 2005, whatever those you know New York shows were. Kingston, uh, for years. And it's amazing to see that they're able to show this on national television now. You know, we're not set in this boundary of what wrestling should be. There's different types of wrestling for everybody. You know, that Lucha match. I'm not the biggest Lucha guy, but I could appreciate Roosh and Black Taurus having... Uh, Roosh and Black Taurus. Uh, uh, Vikingo and, and Black Taurus having that match. Should I be saying in Black Tauros? Because I'm going to be corrected here. Tauros. I, I don't know how to say it, so you're good. <laughs> um, oh, what do you know? Can, can What do you know? One one thing we didn't yeah. mention yet, we, I would like to talk about real yeah. quick, is the Von Erichs. Yeah, the, the Von, Von Erichs. Going up on uh, both Ra Rampage and uh, Ring of Honor. They were great. Dude, there's yeah. something good with those kids, huh? Yeah. I got goosebumps when I hear Stranglehold and they come out. Oh, I got, yeah. I get goosebumps. Mm, yeah. So that's it, great. Yeah. I, I want to see more of the Von Erics. I think it's, it's, a, it's a needed name in wrestling, and I love an opportunity for them. They were in MLW for a while. They've been wrestling for a time. while. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. but, but once you're on a bigger station and you're on national TV and you're, you know, you got a little juice behind you, things kind of change. I'd like to see more of the Von Erics. That's. That's a, and where? And the movie. That's yeah, and the out, movie's so. coming out, which I'm, I'm excited to see. I want to see that movie, and I'm curious because I, I've heard, I, if, from my non-wrestling friends that have seen it, they've absolutely loved it. From my semi-wrestling, like, like uh, casual wrestling fans, they very much like, loved it. But if you are a hardcore fan and you're looking for a live account of everything that happened, it is not that movie. When we come back, we've got a few more things to talk about. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. My producers are about to punch each other in the face here on my side. The holidays are getting to them. I'm watching, I'm watching Matt, my producer here, just chew on a, on a stack of phone books, just ripping them with his teeth. It's unbelievable. He turns into Wolverine. Uh, let's talk about this. What did you want to touch on? Um, so I did pull up the, uh, continental classic okay. for, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday. Here uh, you go. Yeah. yeah mm. This looks good. Uh, John Moxley, Jay white, Swerve Strickland, Roosh, Mark Briscoe, Jay lethal. So I guess Mark Briscoe should get the three points here. So he's not zero on the board. Swerve and Roosh. Do you make it a tie? All of it becomes a tie up there. I mean, you could, it, you could uh, or, yeah. or Jay White could beat Moxley. Now he has 12 points. So 12 points, 12 points. Swerve wins with 12 points. It becomes a three-way. Interesting stuff. I mean, well, you, I, think you, I think they're working with tiebreakers too. So yeah. I don't know exactly how those are going to work out. Yeah, very yeah. interesting stuff. We're going to see. It's going to be a very interesting week for pro wrestling this week. We're going into the holidays. So the next couple of weeks is going to be a little bit nutty. But worlds end the following week. I'll be there. Along with my co-host of Matt Men Rich in our uh, in Long Island here at the Nassau Coliseum, I have not watched wrestling in that building since 1999. That was the last time I saw wrestling in that building, which is and you know what it was? It was the SmackDown uh, where Draws broke his neck. That was the last time I was at that building for wrestling. So uh, very different building now. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, AEW there and a whole lot more, guys. We are out of time today. Do me a favor. Tweet me, at Andrew Zarian. Give me your thoughts on this. All things wrestling over there. Let me be back next week with all the shows that we do. And that's it for this week. See you next time.